The Temple of Artemis or Artemision Greek, Artemision Turkish, Artemis Tapanagi, also known less precisely as the Temple of Diana, was a Greek temple dedicated to an ancient, local form of the goddess Artemis. It was located in Ephesus near the modern town of Selçuk in present-day Turkey. It was completely rebuilt three times, and in its final form was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. By 401 AD it had been ruined or destroyed. Only foundations and fragments of the last temple remain at the site. The earliest version of the temple Atemenos antedated the Ionic immigration by many years, and dates to the Bronze Age. Callimachus, in his hymn to Artemis, attributed it to the Amazons. In the 7th century BC, it was destroyed by a flood. Its reconstruction, in more grandiose form, began around 550 BC, under the Cretan architect Chersiphron and his son Metagenes. The project was funded by Croesus of Lydia, and took ten years to complete. This version of the temple was destroyed in 356 BC by Herostratus in an act of arson. The next, greatest and last form of the temple, funded by the Ephesians themselves, is described in Antipater of Sidon's list of the world's seven wonders. I have set eyes on the wall of lofty Babylon on which is a road for chariots, and the statue of Zeus by the Alpheus, and the hanging gardens, and the Colossus of the Sun, and the huge labor of the high pyramids, and the vast tomb of Mausolus. But when I saw the house of Artemis that mounted to the clouds, those other marvels lost their brilliancy, and I said, Lo, apart from Olympus, the sun never looked on aught so grand. Topic. Location and history The Temple of Artemis was located near the ancient city of Ephesus, about 75 km south from the modern port city of Izmir, in Turkey. Today the site lies on the edge of the modern town of Selçuk. The sacred site at Ephesus was far older than the Artemision itself. Pausanias was certain that it antedated the Ionic immigration by many years, being older even than the oracular shrine of Apollo at Didyma. He said that the pre-Ionic inhabitants of the city were Lelages and Lydians. Callimachus, in his hymn to Artemis attributed the earliest temenos at Ephesus to the Amazons, whose worship he imagined already centered upon an image of Artemis, their matron goddess. Pausanias says that Pindar believed the temple's founding Amazons to have been involved with the siege at Athens. Tacitus also believed in the Amazon foundation, however Pausanias believed the temple predated the Amazons. Modern archaeology cannot confirm Callimachus's Amazons, but Pausanias's account of the site's antiquity seems well-founded. Before World War I, site excavations by David George Hogarth identified three successive temple buildings. Re-excavations in 1987-88 confirmed that the site was occupied as early as the Bronze Age, with a sequence of pottery finds that extend forward to middle geometric times, when a peripteral temple with a floor of hard-packed clay was constructed in the second half of the 8th century BC. The peripteral temple at Ephesus offers the earliest example of a peripteral type on the coast of Asia Minor, and perhaps the earliest Greek temple surrounded by colonnades anywhere. In the 7th century BC, a flood destroyed the temple, depositing over half a meter of sand and flotsam over the original clay floor. Among the flood debris were the remains of a carved ivory plaque of a griffin and the Tree of Life, apparently North Syrian, and some drilled tear-shaped amber drops of elliptical cross-section. These probably once dressed a wooden effigy of the Lady of Ephesus, which must have been destroyed or recovered from the flood. Bammer notes that though the site was prone to flooding, and raised by silt deposits about 2 meters between the 8th and 6th centuries, and a further 2.4 meters between the 6th and the 4th, its continued use, "...indicates that maintaining the identity of the actual location played an important role in the sacred organization." Heraclitus deposited his book, "...on nature," as a dedication to Artemis in the Great Temple. Topic. Second phase The new temple was sponsored at least in part by Croesus, who founded Lydia's empire and was overlord of Ephesus, and was designed and constructed from around 550 BC by the Cretan architect Chersiphron and his son Metagenes. It was 115 meters 377 feet long and 46 meters 151 feet wide, supposedly the first Greek temple built of marble. Its peripteral columns stood some 13 meters 40 feet high, in double rows that formed a wide ceremonial passage around the cella that housed the goddess's cult image. 
Thirty-six of these columns were, according to Pliny, decorated by carvings in relief. A new ebony or blackened grapewood cult statue was sculpted by Endoyos, and a nascos to house it was erected east of the open-air altar. A rich foundation deposit from this era yielded more than a thousand items, including what may be the earliest coins made from the silver-gold alloy electrum. Fragments of bas-relief on the lowest drums of the temple, preserved in the British Museum, show that the enriched columns of the later temple, of which a few survive illustration below, were versions of this earlier feature. Pliny the Elder, seemingly unaware of the ancient continuity of the sacred site, claims that the new temple's architects chose to build it on marshy ground as a precaution against earthquakes. The temple became an important attraction, visited by merchants, kings, and sightseers, many of whom paid homage to Artemis in the form of jewelry and various goods. It also offered sanctuary to those fleeing persecution or punishment, a tradition linked in myth to the Amazons who twice fled there seeking the goddess protection from punishment, firstly by Dionysus and later, by Heracles. Destruction In 356 BC, the temple was destroyed in a vainglorious act of arson by a man, Herostratus, who set fire to the wooden roof beams, seeking fame at any cost, thus the term Herostratic fame. For this outrage, the Ephesians sentenced the perpetrator to death and forbade anyone from mentioning his name, but Theopompus later noted it. In Greek and Roman historical tradition, the temple's destruction coincided with the birth of Alexander the Great around 2021 July 356 BC. Plutarch remarked that Artemis was too preoccupied with Alexander's delivery to save her burning temple. Topic: <inaudible> Third Phase. Alexander offered to pay for the temple's rebuilding. The Ephesians tactfully refused and eventually rebuilt it after his death at their own expense. Work started in 323 BC and continued for many years. The third temple was larger than the second, 137 meters (450 feet) long by 69 meters (225 feet) wide and 18 meters (60 feet) high, with more than 127 columns. Athenagoras of Athens names Endoas, a pupil of Daedalus, as sculptor of Artemis' main cult image. Pausanias (c. 2nd century AD) reports another image and altar in the temple, dedicated to Artemis Protothronia (Artemis of the first seat) and a gallery of images above this altar, including an ancient figure of Nyx the primordial goddess of night by the sculptor Roechus 6th century BC. Pliny describes images of Amazons, the legendary founders of Ephesus and Ephesian Artemis' original protégés, carved by Scopas. Literary sources describe the temple's adornment by paintings, columns gilded with gold and silver, and religious works of renowned Greek sculptors Polyclitus, Phidias, Cressilas, and Fradmon. This reconstruction survived for 600 years, and appears multiple times in early Christian accounts of Ephesus. According to the New Testament, the appearance of the first Christian missionary in Ephesus caused locals to fear for the temple's dishonor. The second century Acts of John includes an apocryphal tale of the temple's destruction. The apostle John prayed publicly in the temple of Artemis, exorcising its demons, and of a sudden the altar of Artemis split in many pieces, and half the temple fell down, instantly converting the Ephesians, who wept, prayed, or took flight. Against this, a Roman edict of 162 AD acknowledges the importance of Artemision, the annual Ephesian festival to Artemis, and officially extends it from a few holy days over March to April to a whole month, one of the largest and most magnificent religious festivals in Ephesus' liturgical calendar. In 268 AD, the temple was destroyed or damaged in a raid by the Goths, an East Germanic tribe, in the time of Emperor Gallienus. Respa, Vegic and Thurur, leaders of the Goths, took ship and sailed across the Strait of the Hellespont to Asia. There they laid waste many populous cities and set fire to the renowned Temple of Diana at Ephesus," reported Jordanes in Getica. It is, however, unknown to what extent the temple was damaged. Whatever the extent of the injuries to the building, it appears to have been rebuilt or repaired, as the temple is noted to have been in use for worship during the rise of Christianity, and closed as a consequence of the persecution of pagans in the late Roman Empire. However, the history of the temple between 268 and its closure by the Christian persecutions is not well known, and it is unconfirmed how big the damage of 268 was, and exactly which year it was closed by the Christians. 
Ammonius of Alexandria comments on the closure of the temple in his commentary of the Acts of the Apostles in the mid-5th century, in which he gives the impression that the closure of the temple had occurred in his living memory. The closure of the Temple of Artemis is assumed to have occurred sometime during the course of the early to mid-5th century, with the year of 407 as an early date. The closure of the temple was followed by the erasing of the name of Artemis from inscriptions around the city of Ephesus. Topic. Final destruction It is unknown how long the building stood after the closure of the temple by the Christians. At least some of the stones from the temple were eventually used in construction of other buildings. Some of the columns in Hagia Sophia originally belonged to the Temple of Artemis, and the Peristasis Sintomoi Chronicae records the reuse of several statues and other decorative elements from the temple, throughout Constantinople. The main primary sources for the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus are Pliny the Elder's Natural History, Pomponius Mela I, 17, and Plutarch's Life of Alexander, referencing the burning of the Artemisium. Topic. Rediscovery of the temple After six years of searching, the site of the temple was rediscovered in 1869 by an expedition led by John Turtle Wood and sponsored by the British Museum. These excavations continued until 1874. A few further fragments of sculpture were found during the 1904–1906 excavations directed by David George Hogarth. The recovered sculptured fragments of the 4th century rebuilding and a few from the earlier temple, which had been used in the rubble fill for the rebuilding, were assembled and displayed in the Ephesus Room of the British Museum. In addition, the museum has part of possibly the oldest pot hoard of coins in the world 600 BC that had been buried in the foundations of the archaic temple. Today the site of the temple, which lies just outside Selchuk, is marked by a single column constructed of dissociated fragments discovered on the site. Topic. Cult and influence The archaic Temetan beneath the later temples clearly housed some form of great goddess, but nothing is known of her cult. The literary accounts that describe it as Amazonian refer to the later founder myths of Greek emigres who developed the cult and temple of Artemis Ephesia. The wealth and splendor of temple and city were taken as evidence of Artemis Ephesia's power, and were the basis for her local and international prestige. Despite the successive traumas of temple destruction, each rebuilding, a gift and honor to the goddess, brought further prosperity. Large numbers of people came to Ephesus in March and in the beginning of May to attend the main Artemis procession. Artemis shrines, temples, and festivals Artemisia could be found throughout the Greek world, but Ephesian Artemis was unique. The Ephesians considered her theirs, and resented any foreign claims to her protection. Once Persia ousted and replaced their Lydian overlord Croesus, the Ephesians played down his contribution to the temple's restoration. On the whole, the Persians dealt fairly with Ephesus, but removed some religious artifacts from Artemis' temple to Sardis and brought Persian priests into her Ephesian cult. This was not forgiven. When Alexander conquered the Persians, his offer to finance the temple's second rebuilding was politely but firmly refused. Ephesian Artemis lent her city's diplomacy a powerful religious edge. Under Hellenic rule, and later, under Roman rule, the Ephesian Artemisia festival was increasingly promoted as a key element in the Pan-Hellenic festival circuit. It was part of a definitively Greek political and cultural identity, essential to the economic life of the region, and an excellent opportunity for young, unmarried Greeks of both sexes to seek out marriage partners. Games, contests and theatrical performances were held in the goddess's name, and Pliny describes her procession as a magnificent crowd puller. It was shown in one of Appel's best paintings, which depicted the goddess's image carried through the streets and surrounded by maidens. In the Roman imperial era, the emperor Commodus lent his name to the festival games, and might have sponsored them. Topic. Ephesian Artemis From the Greek point of view, the Ephesian Artemis is a distinctive form of their goddess Artemis. In Greek cult and myth, Artemis is the twin of Apollo, a virgin huntress who supplanted the titan Selene as goddess of the moon. At Ephesus, a goddess whom the Greeks associated with Artemis was venerated in an archaic, pre-Hellenic cult image that was carved of wood and kept decorated with jewelry. The features are most similar to Near Eastern and Egyptian deities, and least similar to Greek ones. 
The body and legs are enclosed within a tapering pillar-like term, from which the goddess' feet protrude. On the coins minted at Ephesus, the goddess wears a mural crown like a city's walls, an attribute of Cybele as a protector of cities see Polos. The traditional interpretation of the oval objects covering the upper part of the Ephesian Artemis is that they represent multiple breasts, symbolizing her fertility. This interpretation began in late antiquity and resulted in designations of the Ephesian goddess as Diana Ephesia Multimamia and other related descriptions. This interpretation was rooted in Minucius Felix and Jerome's Christian attacks on pagan popular religion, and modern scholarship has cast doubt on the traditionally interpretation that the statue depicts a many-breasted goddess. Evidence suggests that the oval objects were not intended to depict part of the goddess anatomy at all. In some versions of the statue, the goddess' skin has been painted black likely to emulate the aged wood of the original, while her clothes and regalia, including the so-called breasts, were left unpainted or cast in different colors. Robert Fleischer suggested that instead of breasts, the oval objects were decorations that would have been hung ceremonially on the original wood statue possibly eggs or the scrotal sacks of sacrificed bulls, and which were incorporated as carved features on later copies. The breasts of the Lady of Ephesus, it now appears, were likely based on amber gourd-shaped drops, elliptical in cross-section and drilled for hanging, that were rediscovered in the archaeological excavations of 1987-1988. These objects remained in place where the ancient wooden statue of the goddess had been caught by an 8th-century flood. This form of jewelry, then, had already been developed by the geometric period. On the coins, she rests either arm on a staff formed of entwined serpents or of a stack of Auroboroi, the eternal serpent with its tail in its mouth. In some accounts, the Lady of Ephesus was attended by eunuch priests called Megabizoi. This could have been a proper name or a title. The practice of ritual self emasculation as qualification to serve a deity is usually identified with Cybele's eunuch mendicant priests, the galley. The Megabizoi of Ephesian Artemis were assisted by young, virgin girls Cori, a votive inscription mentioned by Florence Mary Bennett, which dates probably from about the 3rd century BC, associates Ephesian Artemis with Crete. To the healer of diseases, to Apollo, giver of light to mortals, Eutyches has set up in votive offering a statue of the Cretan Lady of Ephesus, the light-bearer. The Greek habits of syncretism assimilated all foreign gods under some form of the Olympian pantheon familiar to them in Interpretatio Graeca and it is clear that at Ephesus the identification with Artemis that the Ionian settlers made of the Lady of Ephesus was slender nevertheless later Greeks and Romans identified her with both Artemis and Diana and there was a tradition in ancient Rome that identified her with the goddess Isis as well the Christian approach was at variance with the tolerant syncretistic approach of pagans to gods who were not theirs a Christian inscription at Ephesus suggests why so little remains at the site destroying the delusive image of the demon Artemis Demias has erected this symbol of truth the god that drives away idols and the cross of priests deathless and victorious sign of Christ the assertion that the Ephesians thought that their cult image had fallen from the sky though it was a familiar origin myth at other sites is only known at Ephesus from Acts chapter 19 verse 35 what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Lynn Leidenici observes that modern scholars are likely to be more concerned with origins of the Lady of Ephesus and her iconology than her adherents were at any point in time, and are prone to creating a synthetic account of the Lady of Ephesus by drawing together documentation that ranges over more than a millennium in its origins, creating a falsified, unitary picture, as of an unchanging icon. Panorama See also Ephesia Gromita Mausoleum at Halicarnassus Temple of Diana References Works cited Arnold, Irene Ringwood 1972. Festivals of Ephesus. American Journal of Archaeology. 77 1, 17-22. JSTOR 503607. Bammer, Anton 1990. 
a periteros of the geometric period in the Artemision of Ephesus. Anatolian Studies, 42137-160. doi, 10.2307, 3,754,000, 799. JSTOR 3,642,799. Leidenici, Lynn R. 1992. The Images of Artemis Ephesia and Greco-Roman Worship, A Reconsideration. Harvard Theological Review. 85 4, 389-415. JSTOR 1510059. Further reading Rodriguez Moya, Inmaculada, and Victor Minguez, 2017. The Seven Ancient Wonders in the Early Modern World. New York, Routledge. Romer, John, and Elizabeth Romer, 1995. The Seven Wonders of the World, A History of the Modern Imagination, 1st American ed. New York, Henry Holt. External links Ancient History Encyclopedia, Temple of Artemis at Ephesus Temple of Artemis Ephesos Objects at the British Museum website Florence Mary Bennett, Religious Cults Associated with the Amazons, 1912, Chapter 3, Ephesian Artemis text. James Grout, Temple of Artemis, part of the Encyclopedia Romana Dianus Temple at Ephesus w. R. Lethaby, 1908 Pictures of the Current Situation